Hi guys, are you looking to root your Motorola phone but don't have a computer? If so, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'll show you how to unlock the bootloader and safely root your Motorola phone completely without using a PC. The video might be a bit longer, but don't worry, I've broken everything down into clear, easy to follow steps. Even if you're a complete beginner, you'll be able to root your Moto device without any confusion. But before we dive in, here's something really important. Unlocking your bootloader will void your warranty, so it's something you should keep in mind before starting. This process will also wipe all the data on your device, so make sure to back up everything important before you begin. There's also a small chance of breaking your phone during the process. And if that happens, you'll need a computer to fix it. I already have a separate video on how to fix Moto, Bootloop or bricked phones, so you can check that out if needed. And one more thing, once you unlock the bootloader, I strongly recommend that you don't try to lock it again. Many Motorola phones get permanently bricked when the bootloader is relocked, and the only solution in that case is replacing the motherboard. So be prepared before you start unlocking it, and let's get started. Alright, for this video, I'm using the Moto G71 running on Android 12. But don't worry, this Motorola root method also works on other Android versions and supports a wide range of Motorola devices. Whether you're using a Moto G series, Edge series, Fusion series, or even the Razer Fold phones, the overall process is exactly the same. Alright, the first step in routing any Motorola device is to enable developer options. To do that, open your settings app, scroll down and tap on About Phone. Now find build number and tap on it 7 times until you see a message, you are now a developer. Once that's done, go back to the settings menu and then system settings. There you will see developer options. Here scroll down and enable OEM unlocking, this will allow your bootloader to be unlocked. Next, scroll down a bit and look for USB debugging and turn it on. This will allow your phone to communicate with the another Android phone. Once that's done, it's time for the next step, downloading the current firmware that's installed on your Motorola phone. First, open settings. Go to About Phone and look for the build number. Either note down the build number or long press to copy it. We'll need that exact version to find the right firmware. Next, open your browser and paste that build number. Then type the word firmware after it. Now look through the results and try to find a website that offers the same firmware version for download. If you can't find it anywhere, no problem. Just go to the website lolinet.com. They have firmware files for most Motorola devices. Once you're on the site, tap on firmware, then select Lenomola, means Lenovo Moto. Next, it will ask for the launch year of your device. You can quickly check that on Google. For example, my Moto G71 was launched in 2021, so I'll choose 2021. Now you'll see a list of all Motorola phones released that year. Find your phone and note down its code name. For example, for my Moto G71, the code name is Corfu. Next, scroll down and tap the link to download the firmware. Now look for your phone's code name in the list. Again, mine is Corfu, and here it is. Next, you'll notice multiple code name channel codes. These codes tell you the region or carrier version of the firmware. To find yours, open About Phone again on your Motorola device and look for the software channel section. In my case, it's Retin means it's an Indian retail version. So just match that code to make sure you're downloading the correct firmware for your phone. Finally, make sure the firmware you're downloading matches your Android version. Mine is Android 12, so I'm choosing the same. Once everything matches, download that firmware to your computer or phone. And that's it. You now have the exact firmware for your Motorola device. Alright, now it's time for next step. Getting the boot image file from the firmware. Now I'm using a Pixel 6a as my second Android phone, but you can use any Android phone for this process. On that phone, install the Magisk app using the link in the description and also install the Bugjigger app from the Play Store. Also, I've already moved my downloaded firmware zip file to this phone. Now we just need to extract the firmware. So let me quickly do that. Once it's extracted, you'll see a folder containing a bunch of files. That's your full firmware package. Next, we need to confirm whether this firmware uses a standard boot image or an init boot image. To check that, rename the file called flashfile.xml to flashfile.txt. This file lists all the partitions along with the files linked to them. 
Now open that text file and search for the word boot. There it is. We found a line pointing to boot.img. Since there's no separate init boot file here, that means my Moto G71 uses only boot.img. But if your device shows both boot.img and init underscore boot.img, then remember, you'll need to use init underscore boot.img in the later steps. Now let's copy the boot image outside for easy access. Again, keep in mind, if your device has init boot instead, copy that one instead. Alright, once the file is copied, let's move on to the next step, creating the Magisk patched file. First, open the Magisk app on your phone. Inside Magisk, tap on the install button, then choose select and patch a file. Now locate the boot image file you copied earlier from the firmware folder and select it. Magisk will now patch the boot image, creating a new file called Magisk patched image. Alright, the patched file is now ready. It's saved in your download folder by default. Let's quickly open the file manager and confirm it. And yes, here it is. Our Magisk patched boot image has been successfully created. Next, it's time to connect both devices. You can use either an OTG cable or a Type-C to Type-C cable, whichever works for your phones. When you plug them in, make sure the charging status appears on the main phone. As soon as you connect both phones, you'll see a USB debugging permission pop up on your Motorola phone. Just tap allow to grant access. And there we go. The phone is now successfully connected in the Bugjiger app. Now inside the app, go to the fast boot section and tap reboot bootloader. Your Motorola device will restart and boot into bootloader mode. Let's wait a few seconds until the device boots into fast boot mode. All right, the phone is now in fast boot mode. As you can see, it says OEM locked, which means the bootloader is still locked. So before we can root it, we need to unlock the bootloader first. To do that, open the terminal tab inside Bugjiger and type this command, fastboot oem get unlock data. Once you run this command, you'll see several lines of text appear on the screen, each starting with the word bootloader. Now carefully copy all those lines and paste them into any text editor on your phone. Next, remove the word bootloader from every line so you end up with one single continuous string of characters. This code will be used to get your official unlock key from Motorola's website in the next step. Alright, once you've created the single unlock string, copy the entire thing. Now open the Motorola Bootloader Unlock website. I've added the link in the description below. Once you're on the site, you'll need to sign in or create a new account. You can also log in using your Google account. After logging in, scroll down the page and you'll see a text box. Here, paste the single continuous unlock string that you just copied. Once you've pasted it, click on the button that says, Can my device be unlocked? Motorola will now check your device and if it's eligible, they'll send a unique 20 character unlock key to your registered email address. This usually takes just a few minutes. I've already done this step earlier, which is why I got an error this time. But let me show you the email I received before. Alright, here it is. The email from Motorola. It contains the unlock code that you'll need to actually unlock the bootloader. Now copy that unlock code from your email and go back to your text editor. You'll need to paste it after this command, fastboot om unlock. Once the command is ready, copy the whole line, go back to the Bugjiga terminal and paste it there. Once you run this command, your phone will show a confirmation screen asking if you want to unlock the bootloader. Use the volume down button to highlight unlock the bootloader and press the power button to confirm. This action will format all the data on your phone, so keep that in mind. And yes, as you can see, the fastboot screen now says flashing unlocked. That means the bootloader has been successfully unlocked. Now that our bootloader is unlocked, it's time for the main part, flashing the Magis patched boot image to root the device. In the Bugjiger terminal, run this command, fastboot flash boot, then select the Magis patched boot image file that we created earlier. If your device uses init underscore boot.img instead of boot.img, then use this command instead. 
That's it, the patched boot image has now been flashed successfully. Now we just need to reboot the phone. So type fastboot reboot and hit enter. Your phone will now restart. Since we unlocked the bootloader, all data has been wiped. So we'll need to set up the device from scratch. Let me quickly go through the setup process. And yes, the device has now booted successfully. As you can see, the Magisk app is already pre-installed. When I open the app, it's asking for an update. So let me quickly connect to Wi-Fi and update Magisk to the latest version. And yes, Magisk is now updated. Let's open it again. Now Magisk is asking to reboot the device to apply the changes. So go ahead and reboot your phone. And yes, the device has rebooted. Let's check the root access. And yes, as you can see, Magisk is installed and the version showing here is 30.4. That means Magisk has been successfully installed on this Android phone. To confirm, let's download and install the root checker app. All right, the root checker app is installed. Let's open it and verify root access. And there we go. As you can see, the app confirms that root access is successfully installed on this device. And that's it. Your Motorola phone is now fully rooted and you didn't even need a computer to do it. So yeah, that's how you can unlock the bootloader and root any Motorola phone without a PC using just another Android phone and the Bugjigger app. If you found this video helpful, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.